Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So here we have a model muse and this conversation, this chat is about model conce general concepts of modeling with Modflow and model muse. Okay. So please respond yes one if you have if you have installed model muse on your computer. Please type yes one. Okay. I need that everybody type the, the answer, please. Otherwise I cannot I cannot follow you. Okay, so okay, so I will close my model muse. I close it and then I will open another model muse window. You can find model muse here by in Windows model muse. Um, here I'm going to explain these um, these options of model muse. If you are seeing what I am seeing, please type yes two. I mean type type this yes two. Okay, cool, that's great. We have, when you open Model Muse, you can implement models in Modflow, Fast and Sutra. Do you know the, the difference in between Modflow, Fast and Sutra? Type yes or type no. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, the main difference in between Modflow is a ground is a ground water flow model. So this actually calculates the waterheads that are related to flow. Yeah. You can calculate also solute transport with MT3DMS, but is almost uh, flow and mass transport. Fast is flow mass transport and reaction. It actually implements Frixi on a groundwater flow model. While Sutra is related to finite elements and Modflow is related to finite difference. Do you got the, the difference? Please, please type yes 3 Type yes 3 If you have any questions, please Okay, cool. That's right. So we are now now uh, we are going to make a mod, a mod a model on Modflow. So please create, please press here on create new Modflow model and type yes. Next, next. Okay, on Modflow you have number of columns, number of rows, number of layers, column width, row width. In this time we are going to do a model of 40 columns, 30 rows, with a column width of, let's say, 50 meters and a row width of 50 meters. Yep. And then we are going to put four layers. Okay. Please fill these five values and then type yes four. On the on the grid origin, we are going to say that is 5,000 on the x value, y value is 5,000, and on the elevation is 2,000. Okay. Grid angle. This is going if you wanted that the grid is inclined. We don't want it right now, so we are going to put grid angle of zero. If you have any question, please just write it and then I answer. Okay. And our first aquifer will be sand. 
Then our second aquifer will be lime. Our third aquifer will be gravel. And our fourth aquifer will be bedrock. Okay. In modern news, you cannot repeat the aquifer names. Okay, so you cannot put sand, lime, and then sand again. You have to put another another name like upper sand and lower sand or something like that. Okay. Then on the bottom elevation, on model top, model top, on model mu is surface always. It's a variable of the system, and we are going to put on 2000. On sand, we in model mu we don't define the model, the layer thickness rather than we define the top and the bottom of the layer okay so if we have a layer thickness of 20 meters we which value will be the bottom elevation of sand is a question please type your answer if sand it has a thickness of 20 meters, which will be the bottom elevation of sand. Yes, that's right. It will be... Okay. Mm -hmm. So, if we have 30 meters of lime, which will be the bottom elevation of lime? Of Type it. If we have 30 meters of line, which will be the bottom elevation of line? Okay, that's right. Mm -hmm. If we have 50 meters of gravel, which will be the bottom elevation of gravel? No, no, because gravel actually comes from the bottom elevation of line to the bottom elevation of gravel. Okay, that's right. Don't worry if you don't get it right now. I mean, you are really new to model news and you will see this concept on the model itself. So for the moment, just follow. And then we have 20 meters of bedrock. So no, of bedrock, we are going to have 100 meters. So it will be like this. Okay, if you are with these values that I am that I show on my screen, please type yes five. Okay, everybody, if somebody needs more time or have a question, please type it. Ricardo, ok, Ratul, María de los Ángeles, Moitila, Beth, who else is here? Uh, Paulo, Paulo is there? Paulo went to went to bed now. Okay, so we say finish. Finish. Okay. That's great. So you have made your first geometry of model muse. Here I will expand mine. If you press this one, that the ones that seems to be a sheet Sheet. Well, with a that says restore 2D view, if you press it, it will actually create a zoom to extend. Okay, then I can do. Ah, uh, please, Maria Los Angeles. I think that you are seeing the model muse video. Could you turn off your 
Line, your mic. I can see lines here. Okay, I have done it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so you have a model that is actually 40 columns, no, that, uh, that has 40 columns and 30 rows. Yeah. So, do you see that one of the, like you have some stronger, like stronger, like, like thicker lines, one here and here and here and as well here and here. Do you see that? If you see that, please type G6. Yes, type it. Yeah. Cool. Those are actually multiple multiples of 10 so doesn't mean it means that this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and it appears one ticker line and then this is the next this is will be the 20 column 30 columns and 40 columns this is a quicker this is a quicker method to see how many columns and how many rows do you have because if we have four ticker uh, vertical lines, it means that we have 40 columns. If we have three ticker horizontal lines, it means that we have 30 rows. If is that okay? If is that okay, type yes, seven. Okay. Charlie, are you there? Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. It's great. So this is the aerial view. This is actually the view from the air. And this is the side view. This is the front view, and this is the view on this direction. On this direction, I mean, going from the top to the bottom. And this is this is the side view that is a view from this direction. Okay, and this is the isometric view. Okay, I will ask you to do to use this one. Do you see this one? This this cross that is blue and green. If you see that, please type yes. Eight. Cool. With this one, you can change of the cross section, okay? Because actually, it comes by default that you are seeing this row and this column, yeah? But you can go and here, for example, you can change of the cross section by one for 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 any row or any column like like these ones okay just type just press in any part close to the center of the model okay if you have done it please type yes nine cool now what we are going to do it's like you are going to extend the isometric view like you are going to extend it like you just just simply drag this one and drag this one and here you will see the isometric view and then if you press the more the you press the bottom of yours of your mod of your if you press the the bottom of your mouse you can actually rotate your model Please do it and type yes one. Cool. Okay. On the isometric view, you can actually turn on the horizontal grid by pressing show to show top grid. You can actually press the front grid but it will it will show you the front grid but on the on the row that we have selected and it will show you as well the side grid on the row that we have selected okay 
If you are seeing the same as me, please type yes too. Cool, that's great. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, you are doing great. For example, there are some people that might do not have this on your computer because it could happen that you have this turned off. If you have this one, this one that that says show Rachel off, like it won't appear. Mm -hmm. I don't know what what is the meaning of that, but it won't appear there the isometric view. Okay, please we are going to decrease the size of the isometric view. Okay, and now we are going to talk about the different parts of model views. Okay, are you ready? I hope so. Okay, first go to file. On file you can create a new mod flow fast and sutra model. You can open a model. You can save your project on if you press save just press save save you can actually have four four options to save your project the first one is the gpt this is the most common mod flow file then you have the binary file that is the gpb then you have the xml file and then you have a zipped or like compressed version of the file this is this is good when you when you are dealing like you want to to give the model with the results and it could be a very heavy file so then you instead of saving as gpt you can save it as mmzlib okay if it's that if you understood this please type yes three okay for now on, we are not going to save the model, but I wanted to give you this, this information. So we say cancel. Okay. On file, <laughs> okay. On file, we are going to then to see import. Okay. On import, we can import the model results. Okay. Uh, model Muse is a pre processing tool and as well as a post processing tool. So when you pre-process, I mean, you put the boundary condition, then you put the hydraulic parameters, then you put the time spatial discretization, and as well the temporal discretization, then you run mod flow, okay? You run mod flow, because model muse implements mod flow. I mean, it, it really creates the file that mod flow requires to run. And then when you have the simulation, you can import the results, and there is why you have this model result because you import the results of the simulation if you have understood this please type yes for if you have a question please type it as well okay then you can open check files when you have when you uh, model muse actually do, do not deal with system of coordinates my recommendation is to use UTM coordinates okay so whether you use UTM or like you use a coordinate system that has the I mean don't use geographical it's, it's, I mean spatial data on geographical coordinate because actually you you cannot run mod flow if you are dealing with degrees and arc degrees or something like that okay so here import check file then you can open dxf file dxf file is only i mean i i few times have used dxf file that is actually file from autocad uh, and then you can open some raster files that are surfer grid files that is those files are actually made by um, surfer and they are compatible with 
as well as RGS and QGIS. Um, I use it a lot. Then sample them data I have not used. Points you can import as XYZ uh, points. Grid data is when you when you transport from uh, Excel worksheet to your model, then you can import it as a grid data. ASCII raster file is another type of files. Actually, model muse, you can, for example, what, what you will import as a surfer, as a grid file? Elevation. Elevation is always a raster file, mostly. And you can import it as a surfer grid file or as a ASCII raster file. Okay. Have you understood this? Please type yes five. Okay. Okay, cool. I don't know Charlie, but uh, your chat, I see it on, on another window. I don't know if you can join us on the common. Let's see if you are here. Yeah, you're here. I think that you are, that you are uh, like, come on, how to say, like you are, your status is hidden or something like that, that you cannot share your chat or something like that. Okay. If you can fix it, it will be great. Okay, cool. Now we have, we go to import. We are still on import. We can import an image and how, what it will be. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, image is when you want to import. For example, it's very handy to use a satellite image on your groundwater flow model because you can relate better with your boundary conditions, with the wells, when where you have a water body or a river or something like this. You can import it, and this is not the first. We are not going to do it on this on this uh, webinar, but there will be another webinars where um, where uh, I will teach you how to import satellite or like background image on model muse, and this very is not so complicated. Okay. Then you can import a new a model Modflow 2005 model. Like is this is related when you have to, to import and I will do a tutorial when you have visual Modflow files and then you wanted to import it on model Muse. You can do it. Okay, and this is with these ones. And model mate is when you have U code. Do you know U code? If you know you go to please type yes one. No. Okay. Uh, but answering to your question, uh, in actually in model muse you don't need a CRS. Okay. I just telling you that you have to work on UTM on meters because uh, Modflow works on meters. Okay. If that, okay. You, okay. If, bet does it answer your question? Okay. Okay. What is U code? I mean, I, I can tell you about U code because just today I finished my first, well, my first. Uh, tutorial. No, it's, it's an example I made on UCode. UCode is a is a software for parameter estimation and sensitivity. Yeah, the same. UCode. I don't know if my English is well enough, but um, it's a parameter for sensitivity sensitivity sensi 
activity analysis analysis and parameter estimation estimation okay and if you want to to make if you want to to create the model made to import some value from model made you use it like this model made is actually a software that implements your code okay okay then we go to export you can export the input files you can export the modpad file input file modpad is actually a software that runs on mod flow but that calculates particle tracking okay some budget is another package that that deals with some budget but on certain parts of our model i mean some budget related maybe to a boundary condition some part related to an aquifer okay okay then it comes then you can export shape files if you see you have four options now you have four options maybe along the time you can have more options the first option is grid data to shape file grid data to shape file is related to the data of the cell i mean you will have a polygon of the cell with the data related i mean if you want to explore the boundary conditions related to the grid or if you want to 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 explore the hydraulic parameters related to the cells you can export it as grid data objects are related give me a sec objects are related to spatial data mostly objects are related to points lines and polygons okay that are that are the gis elements okay and then you objects are like for example the drainage network of the system the pumping wells of the system or certain recharge areas of the system okay if you have understood how object or what objects are please type yes six Okay, that's great. If you have any question, please type it. Okay. Cool. Then we have contours as shape file. Contours as shape file. Yeah. Is actually when you have, for example, like the water table, or like you have the depression, like the drown down. Those are con you can express the drawn down as a grid cells or as a contour. If you have it, I mean, if you have a contour that you see on this, you can export this as a check file with file export check file contours to check file. If you want to export head of the, if you want to export your piezometer data, but not only the piezometer data, but the different the, the piezometer data with the calculated head and the observed head you can export it as head observation to shape file okay cool this will export the piezometers then you can export the data set to csv csv is comma is a comma separate value that is a uh, that is a uh, a file that is compatible with Microsoft Excel, for example, if you want to, to export the, the value of the cell as a, to the, no the values of the cells to Excel, okay? Then you can make a screenshot of your of your area, and then you can export and uh, you can export the model in order to run on model mate that implements your code, okay? Cool. If it's that if it if it's that right, please type yes seven. Uh, 
cool then we have another option that is file to archive I don't know what is it I have never used ok cool then we go to edit in edit we have cut copy paste it's the same as in every in every program you cut your copy and key paste objects ok you can select all and then you can edit this is related with the background image I mean the image that of the aerial image that you can import it and on mode flow you can import image on the top and as well on the sides ok this I have never used I have never import an image on the sides but maybe you can import a cross section a geological cross section for example here and then you can see how your model is is related I mean how the geometry of the model or the hydraulic parameters of the model are related to the to the geological cross sections or like hydrogeological conceptualization okay then we go to grid okay everybody are in grid if everybody is in grid please type yes 8 If you have any question, please type it as well. I think that no one has questions, so maybe I will explain some very more complicated stuff. So, or maybe not. Okay, cool. Um, in object, in grid, we can define the grid. Okay. I don't know if you if any of you have used visual mode flow before please type yes or please type no no okay yeah maybe I'm too old okay um, mm, yes okay in mod in visual mode flow the the grid was like static you cannot turn you cannot do much things with the grid but in mod flow in model muse actually you can do everything with the grid like for example we can generate a grid this time we don't have the object to generate it but we can delete you can delete grid lines for example we come here and then we select it appears an x and then we i select this one maybe i wanted to select this one and maybe I want to select to delete this one so please go to data to grid and please delete two vertical lines and two horizontal lines okay please do it and type after you do it please type yes 9 I do it just to show that you can delete okay this is not this is not have any hydrogeological background it's just to show the 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 uses of the tool okay cool then we can move grid the same I mean I will move it you don't have to do it I mean I take this one and then I move it if I want you please don't do it I will do it just me then you can add you can add a vertical grid line you can a horizontal line you can specify and this is what we are going to do all together we are going to subdivide grid cells this is when you want to do a refinement and when you want to do a refinement is when actually you wanted to describe with better accuracy which is the impact on the groundwater flow regime on a certain area for example, here I will go to grid, subdivide grid cells, and then I select any area of any extension. For example, do you see that this, there is a gray zone that is selected for me? And then I can select it. Okay, I will do cancel. How do I select? I go to grid and go to subdivide grid cells. Grid, subdivide grid cells and then I press the ref, the left button of the mouse 
and I keep it pressed and when I finish I release the left button okay and I will subdivide each column into two and I can subdivide each row into two if you have done it please type yes two Okay, cool, everybody is on just two. Cool. Then we put OK. And then if you if you see, we have subdivided each column into two and each row into two. What does it mean that on the outer grid we will have a grid extension of 50 meters while I can do zoom by rolling the by rolling the the wheel of my mouse and then I can do it and then this will be 25 it's, if it's this the same on your model please type yes 3 Cool. Now, what else? Ah, okay. Have you seen that I have used the ruler? The ruler is a very handy tool that you can measure things on your model. You can measure on the aerial view, but as well, you can measure as well on the side view and as well, no, on the front view and as well on the side view. Okay? This is the ruler. The ruler is here. Do you see this? Okay, that's that's a ruler. Okay, this is in grid. Okay, I will do something cool. Please, everybody, go and press this one, the one that is the the sheet with the the say result default 2D view, and we are going to rotate the grid. Yeah, do you see this? We are going to rotate the grid. Please rotate your grid. And if you have rotated your grid, please type yes for. Okay. Cool. You are doing great. Okay. We are going to add the tree type. If you seen on objects you can create three types you can create everybody goes to object you can go to create and then you you can create points lines and polygons okay do you see this point lines and polygons on model views you can as well which tool rotate if you want to rotate is this one drag to rotate okay bet drag to rotate you press this one so you go to drag to rotate and then you just keep it keep the left you just keep the left click of your mouse and then you rotate okay go to object please object create you can create lines points and polygons 
but on model news you can create as well a straight line and a rectangle okay GIS GIS I mean geographical information system has only three elements that are point lines and polygons but you have you see a straight line and rectangle as well but don't worry because a straight line is a type of polyline and rectangle is a type of polygon so in the end you are dealing with just three entities points polylines and polygons okay you have to keep it on your mind that these are the three object types that you can perform so we are going to create a, pol a point okay first go to object create point is that all right okay and then we go and it appears our cursor our arrow with a point and then we go to any place maybe when I did where I did my refinement and then I put right click it will appear this one if you have the same as me please type yes 5 Cool. Here we are going to call it well because this will be a well, our supposed well. Okay. Then we we set set value of intersected cells and then we change of color. Why? Because otherwise by default is black and black is not so it's not so cool. So we go and put it blue. Okay. So color object line blue. Okay. Cool. And then you can here you see number of set formulas. You have zero, you have one, and then you have two. Okay. Do you see this? Zero, one, or two. Okay. If you are dealing with a well, a well is located at a certain depth. So it cannot be zero maybe it is one or maybe it is two uh, we are going to say that is one and here we see model top but on the as a with a white background okay if you see this with a back with one and white background please type yes six Cool. Now we go to edit formulas. In edit formulas, in this time we are going to do an introduction of about what is a edit formulas. Uh, I have it's it's kind of long, but we can do many many things on this. Like for example, you we can import a whole uh, fault by just setting up these formulas. What else we can do with formulas? We can import a geological model with formulas as well. So there is a lot of potential when you deal with 3D data on formulas, okay? In this time, we are going to see, please have a look on data sets required layer definition because we can actually relate to layer definition or like we, we have, we can, we do have tools on GIS I mean tools related to the grid, tools related to logical, math operations, related to mod flow, related to the object itself, related to text and as well as trigonometry. You have a lot of tools here. That's why I will recommend you that if you have if you want to conceptualize some uh, complex hydrogeological setup please think on the formulas okay in this time we are going to say model top minus 40 and um, with model top minus 40 our well will be located at 40 meters depth if you have understood this and you put okay 
If you have this on your computer, please type yes, 7. If you have any question, just type it. Okay. Yep. Yes, Ricardo. You can import geological 3D models like this. This. Uh, this uh, geo modeler stuff you can import it you can anything i mean you can i don't know if you if you know this mining software as mine site vulcan something like that anything can be imported i mean if this if this if this is spatial data can be imported on modern news okay if that answer to your question ricardo Okay, cool. So here we say, okay. And now we have a well here. What else? We are going to object, we are going to create, and we go to polygon, polyline, polyline. On polyline, we are going to say, we are going to, to make a polygon line. Sorry. And not this one because it's really short. I'm going to object create polyline object create polyline one two three four five six seven. Yep. I'm going to to make a wider line and then I I press twice the right click the left click it appears this one. Okay. And they say that this is a river. Yeah, let's say that this is a river. Okay. And the river, I'm going to change the color line as a river on the blue color. And then I'm going to apply a number of set formulas of one. And, okay, so if you have done a river and then you have the number of set formulas as one, we are going to edit formula. And on edit formula, the river will be on model top. We type model top twice and this appears here. Okay. If you have the same as I have. You have the same as I, please type yes to. Yes to. Cool. Okay, so we say, uh, then we have here is our river. And then, like, I am going to apply, like, a polygon here. That it will reflect maybe some crop areas or something like that. So we go to polygon and then we say we apply a polygon, any polygon, then we put double click and it appears this one. Okay, and this is crops because actually we want to represent crops. Mm -hmm. And then when you are dealing with polygons, you can specify two things, whether you can specify the boundary and the, the object line and the object interior. So the object line will be green and the object interior will be green as well. So that's why if we put it and our crops as well will be on number of form set one and it will be where are the crops on model top on surface model top okay if you have the same as me please type yes two yes three yes three
Okay, cool. Any questions? You can write. Okay. Now you have this. So, congratulations to you. You have already done the three basic objects of model news that are the points, the line, and the polygon. Okay? Cool. Now we go back to data. First we go to the go to data and then you see that this is a global variable okay the question is what is a global variable imai you can apply for example you have a, the first aquifer is a like let's say that you have a layer that is a sandstone yeah so you define an, an object and then you apply the hydraulic conductivity of sandstone to the object but you are doing a calibration and then like the calibration is you have to tweak this value up or down in order to to get the right fitness in between observe and um, in between observed data and calibrated data i mean to you want to decrease this gap and then every time you have to open the object and then you have you modify in the object the value with va global variables you actually relate the object the hydraulic conductivity to a value to a variable where you can specify here the value of the variable let's say that i will put here name like will be k of sandstone actually we don't have sandstone in our model but let's see and the value of sandstone will be 110 to the minus 7 let's say and this is initial value of sandstone okay so this is the this is actually the the um, this is actually what is a global variable in this type I mean when you when you need global variables when you do calibrations when you do calibrations by hand you you need uh, global variables okay in the in our case I mean Right now we are not doing a model in itself, so we just put apply and then we put close. Okay. Then we have data sets. Data sets are really important, so we open data sets. Open. On data sets, you have required. Everything is right now. You have only required. I mean, required. What is a required value? A required value is a value that you need for mod flow to run okay you need a required value for mod flow to run but actually you don't need to specify every required value because mod flow will if a value is missing will apply a default value okay if you understand me what is a default value i mean when if you have understand that mod flow will apply a default value if you have it not to specify a value please type yes for Okay, you are doing great. So, which are the required values? The required values first is active. Active it means that if your model is active or is um, if your model is if it's true is active and if it's false is unactive. <laughs> okay, but in our case is true. Yeah, true is true. I mean it's with capital T okay if you if you type it with normal t it won't it won't work it has to be with capital t and false as well is with capital f okay if we say true we say that by default all the model extension is true but when you deal with a basin like you have the that the inside the basin is active and outside the basin is inactive 
I hope and I have some tutorials. I have some tutorials where I, I change it. And as well, what else do we have? And I hope that we can do some webinars as well with dealing with data on a special, on a basing, no? On a basing scale. Okay. Then we have the horizontal anisotropy. The horizontal anisotropy is actually the, the difference in between the hydraulic conductivity on X direction and the hydraulic conductivity on the Y direction. By default, I mean, few times I have to deal with horizontal anisotropy, but sometimes maybe your geological setup is, uh, it is depending upon your hydrogeological setup, you have to define an horizontal anisotropy. Okay? Then you have, by default, is one. If you see here, it's one. Then you have the hydraulic conductivity on the x direction. By default, is one ten to the minus four. So if you see this, is the hydraulic conductivity. It, this is in meters per second and is related to sandy gravel, something like that. This is a granular aquifer with sands. Okay, it's a, it's a high. By default, is the I mean, if you have, if you don't specify the hydraulic conductivity, by default it will it will apply a value that is close to sand. Okay, then ky it is the same as kx, and kz is kx divided by ten. Okay. Why do we have this anisotropy, this vertical anisotropy? Because due to the effect of the gravity, like we will have like compact, compactation, compactation of the of soil due to gravity, where but on the vertical direction. So the the aquifer, it will be easier for the water to flow into the into the horizontal plane rather than infiltrating down or like up i mean like going down or up into the aquifer because due to gravity we have a more compactation on the vertical axis if you understood this please type yes five if you have any question please do it Cool. Mm -hmm. Then we go to initial head. Initial head is we have by default that is zero. Okay? And then I wanted to to look for your I wanted to look for your attention, please. Please type base on what you have, please type which is the elevation range of your model. Which are the elevation range of your model? Okay, actually what is, it's go from 1800 to 2000. Okay, that's right. Okay, but the initial head is zero. Do you see that here we have, I mean, what is the initial head as well? Okay. Um, what is the initial head? Okay. Yeah, it's in meters above sea level. Cool. That is the initial head is actually. I mean, when you wanted to to when you want to 
to solve the groundwater, I mean, when you want to, to, to compute the groundwater flow regime, you, the actually mod flow will create a matrix. Yep. Okay, so it will create a matrix where every cell is actually aligned on the matrix. Okay, but since these matrix are huge, I mean these are not I mean these are not matrix that can be solved through direct solving. Like it will it will be solved by iterations. In order to be solved by iterations, you need to give an initial value for the model to start the iterations. Okay, so you, you, do you understand? The initial head is the starting value that the model will use to, to, to solve, uh, the, the, the model will use to solve in order to get a solution. So if you have understood me what is an initial head, please type yes, six. Okay, so here we, I mean, from the from the beginning, the initial head is I always use it the model top. So what the, what do I say that in order that the model to in order for the mod flow to start the iteration, I say that all my model is saturated. This is what I say by setting up as initial head. So we put two thousand and then we put it apply. Okay, if you don't put apply, it won't change anything. I mean, you have to put apply and then you have to put close. If you put close and you don't press apply, it won't change anything. Okay, cool. And then on layer definition, we can change the elevation of the different, of the different aquifers. Okay, but uh, if you want, you can change, I mean, like you, you can put the the boundaries up or down if you want okay so but we have done it for this okay then we go to data data visualization is actually when you have data okay this time we are we are not going to have uh, this webinar is mostly to explain the the most the mod flow features and the next i'm planning to have a next webinar that is only on working with the spatial data on model muse so we are going to more to work with QGIS and model muse because uh, you there is a lot of gis things that you can import i mean as a numerical modeler you work 80 percent on gis and 20 percent on mod flow because most of the work is done on gis okay then if you want to, to, I mean, if you have run your model, if you want to see the value of a specific cell, you can use this one, show grid or mesh values. And this is, if you have imported, this is mostly when you, when you have data from simulation, but in this case, we are not going to use it. Okay, object, we have created an object. We can edit object. We can show or hide objects. Oh, for example, do you see this? show or hide objects please press it show or hide object please press it. and you will have this one you will have all object and unused objects okay do you see all object and unused object if you see this please type yes seven Okay, what it say? This is very smart from Model Muse. This says that all the objects that you have, that actually are three objects, are unused. So is they are not related, not even to hydraulic parameter, not even to a boundary condition. Okay, so it actually classifies your your objects. 
If those are related, for example, for a grid cell, it will appear on grid, the grid cell section. If, if those are related to a boundary condition, it will appear on the boundary condition. But right now, since we have created the object, but we have not assigned anything to the object, it will be on and use objects. If you have understood this, please type yes 8. If you have any question, please do it. Okay, great. Cool. Okay, so then we go to navigation. Navigation is the same, zoom in, zoom out, zoom to the previous and measure. Nothing, nothing special on navigation, the same as any other um, program. On view, we can we can tweak the this is for tweaking the the isometric view and here for example errors and warnings and if, if everybody see errors and warnings it will actually uh, show you that the model have compiled well or maybe you have made a mistake on your maybe you have made a mistake on your model that you can make as well mistakes on your model so it will appear here okay and then you can customize I I have not done much on this yep. the, um, and on model this is very important okay so everybody goes to model and please have a look on the values that they are, that are here so everybody is on model and have a look on the values that are there Mm -hmm. So first of all, we have ModFlow 2005. ModFlow 2005 is actually the most is the version of ModFlow that is the most actual version of ModFlow, and it says that it's 2005, but the latest update is from the last year, I guess. Okay. Then it comes from ModFlow LGR V1 and V2. ModFlow LGR V1 and V2 is local grid refinement. Is when you do a inset model, a child model with a higher refination inside your model. Uh, I tried to do it once, uh, maybe I was so lazy I, I have not been deep into local grid refinement. Then it comes with ModFlow NWT. This is a solver of ModFlow actually, and it's a very powerful solver of ModFlow when you have complex geometries. And when you can have complex geometries, when you are dealing with basins with high difference in elevations, okay? So when you are dealing with with numerical models with high difference in elevation, you use ModFlow NWT. If you are dealing with with uh, aquifers, but very regular aquifers, you use ModFlow 2005, okay? Then it comes ModFlow CFP. CFP is when you try to model caverns, okay, or cars, cars caverns, or like discontinuities on the porous media or on the fractured media, okay. This is mod flow CFP, and then we have mod flow OWHM. WHM is actually one word hydrological model and is a couple of mod flow with an hydrological model. Okay, it's very interesting. However, I do not have much experience with this because it actually calculates, it actually deals with uh, flow on the unsaturated part and so it's really interesting. Okay, then you can change it to fast and sutra. Okay, so if you have understood what is here or if you have any question, if you have understood, please type yes, eight, nine. If you have any question, please give it right now. Nine. Yes, nine. Cool. Then we go to package and programs. Package and programs. And then I wait. On package and programs, we go to flow. 
On flow, we specify the flow package. We can specify in between, mostly in between BCF and LPF. Okay, half is a is an approach that is kind of all. I did few research on this. I have not used it. Most of my models are on LPF. Okay, and on BCF, I have done maybe my master thesis was done in BCF, but so far I have not done much on this. Okay, on LPF uh, is, I mean, what is the difference on BCF and LPF? Do you know it? Type it? Maybe somebody knows it. Uh, okay, the main, the main difference is that when you do with LPF, you calculate the, the what, the, the hydraulic heads on the nodes of the cell. On the nodes of the cell, so it, it those are the hydraulic conductivities on the cell nodes. While on BCF, since it's center, you calculate the water, the hydraulic heads on the center of the cell. Okay, so why LPF we calculate it here on the vertex, BCF will calculate on the node on the center of the cell. Okay, if it's clear, please type yes to. If it's not clear, <laughs> okay, cool. So we are going to use LPF. On the boundary conditions, you have a specified head, a specified flux, and head dependent flux. Okay? A specified head are the first time boundary conditions, a specified flux are the second time boundary conditions, and head dependent flux are the third time. I don't know, one, one of these is Dirslet, Newman, and they have another name, but I don't remember. Okay, on first time, a specified head, you have the constant head. Um, this was the only one, and then that then it appears the flow and head boundary condition. I, I do not have any experience with this package so far. So, uh, constant head boundary condition is a head, is a hydraulic head that, the, is a hydraulic head that is, in fact, is not related to, is a hydraulic head that, it, I mean, what, when, when do you use a constant head? When you have a water body, like it can be a river, or like it can be a, a lake, that it will, yeah, but when, when the effect on the, when the, the impact, for example, of your wells won't have any effect on the level of the, of the water body. For example, if you have a river that brings 180 cubic meters per second, it doesn't matter if you if you pump 1, 10, 50, or maybe 80 liters per second, you won't affect the level of the river. Okay? And then you apply constant head there in this case. If it's that clear, please type yes 3. Mm -hmm. Is that clear for everyone? I can repeat it. No worry. Okay. Cool. Then we have the recharge. Recharge is actually recharge by precipitation. Yeah. And on recharge, we have top layer, top active cell, and we have top layer and top active cells. I will explain, I will open a model with, I will open a model with, um, I will open a model that will explain which is the difference in between using recharge and recharge on the top layer.
Okay. I, this is a model that is actually a regional model where I have um, where I have 100 piezometers and this is a model that was constructed from the environmental impact assessment and this is quite a good model because it, it can handle many things on, the, on this and I hope that I made another another webinar or something like this with this because this is really consultant level model so it's not it's not academic okay I have to wait okay here do you see my and the model is more heavy as well Okay, here we have a model of four basins, and here I have the, the topography, and I will show you the cross sections data. Let me see if I have more results. Okay, here I have the water table. Water table, it will appear on my cross section as a blue line, blue line, okay, it's evaluating, okay, here, cool, so, I will do a zoom in and say, do you see that here the water table is close to surface do you see that water table is close to surface type yes okay i will i will show you where eh? sorry i here water table is close to surface okay if you see that here the water table is close to surface type yes Yeah, okay. But what happens here? The water table here is not close to surface. The water table here is actually on the first one, two, three, four, five, the fifth layer, okay? So if we say here on your on your model that the recharge also is in the top layer, and if the top layer is inactive here because actually it's dry it won't apply the recharge yep so we say that recharge is on top layer and here is inactive it won't apply the recharge so therefore if we are doing with basins with high difference in elevations what usually we do is we say apply in the top active cell because what does it mean that is in the top active cell is that it, it will say okay i want to apply the recharge here but it's inactive okay i will go to the next cell but it's inactive okay i will apply here no it's inactive i will apply here no it's inactive and then i i reach this one that is active and it will apply the recharge there okay do you if you understood the difference Please type yes for.
okay cool now we are going to go to package and pro no not here well here is the same and i can use this one we go to package and programs and then we go to boundary conditions and then we have say recharge okay recharge and top itself then it comes the well the well is the pumping i mean when you want to pump you use the well package but it's when you want to pump and then when you want to when you want to inject as well so if you want to pump you for example i want to pump five liter per second i will say i pump okay this is negative if i pump is negative because i am taking water out of the system if i want to inject and i say i want to inject 10 liters per second i say if it's this clear when you inject is positive and when you pump is negative is this clear just type yes fine okay 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 and then you have the drain package the drain package what is a drain a drain is this water network this water networks that is actually if you see well you don't see but the drain package is the water network that actually is Oops. that actually the water network is is I you will see on my computer okay here is the drain the drain is actually taking water out of the system okay in mod flow if you don't set up that the water can leave the system the water won't leave the system okay so water here is flowing and um, going out of the system as evapotranspiration and as drain recharge yeah here if the drain will only take water out of the system and one when it will take water out of the system is when the water table in the surrounding of the cell are higher because water will be will go from the from the sides and from the bottom to the drain okay what happened and what will happen if the water table is below the drain elevation somebody can answer it what do you think will happen if instead of this situation where the water table is higher than the than the drain elevation you have that the water is below the cell elevation yes sure when you have the water table below the drain elevation the cell is inactive and it will be and it won't do nothing i mean it won't take any water out of the system okay so this is the famous drain package it's very handy when you know that your water network is taking water out of the system if you know that the water table is taking out of the system you have to use the drain package it's very stable drain recharge package is when the water went out of the system and then went back to the system then you have evapotranspiration segment evapotranspiration segment is a package that is tube that allows you this package allows you to represent better the the routing depth okay so what does it mean that here when the water table is close to surface plants can actually take water from the groundwater so it will create a wetland here and you will have some uh, some vegetation here okay but if you want to deal i mean with higher accuracy on how much water do the vegetations take out of the system you have to use evapotranspiration segments but 
For example, in this model, we have used evapotranspiration, evapotranspiration package. That is um, a package that is simpler, but uh, is for a basic scale is is enough for to represent the evapotranspiration process. Okay. Then we have a general head boundary condition that is a boundary condition that is really close to the constant head boundary condition, but it applies a conductance factor that relates on how this what is a conductance is how the model, how your boundary condition is connected to the aquifer. Okay, this is the conductance. Then we have the lake. If you want to simulate lake, you use lake. Then you use multi-node that actually, I mean, what, what, when you have to use multi-node? Okay. okay. I mean, let's say in our model, we have said that the well is 40 meters below surface, but 40 meters below surface will be once, I mean, well is pumping, okay, in the model that we have done, no? because I like it. We go with the, with this cross, the green and, and, and blue, and we go to the place, no? and here we have our model. Yeah, in, the, in this case, I, I, I myself, I will do a modification. I will go here, and instead of say minus 40, I will say minus 100. This is just for me. Okay, it's here. Do you see? It's here. Okay. Let's say that this minus 19. Okay. If you see in my computer that the well is located at 90 meters, it will apply the boundary condition of well here, only on this cell. Okay. And if you see, or if you have seen some production wells, the well is not exactly open only on this layer, but it's actually open on the whole layers. Okay? It's open here, it's open here, it's open here, in order to more water to get into the onto the well, and then you can pump more. Okay? If you want to represent this, a model that is a well that is reparted, not reparted, it's distributed, in many cells, you have to use model package and programs boundary condition multi node well. Multi node well actually distributes the well in many layers. If you have understood this, please type yes six. Cool, you are doing great. What else do you need? You need for you, you need the drain elevation. No, uh, you need if you want to, to model a reservoir, it will be here, a river it will be here. And this is to do the routing. I mean, the masking out. I mean, when you have that the water went out of the system, for example, here. When do I when, when do I need to use stream flow routing? Is when I mean, imagine that you have calculated that water went out of the system here yeah but your your uh, observation point is here how how can you relate the 
the base flow here to observation flow point here is actually because you have the water that went out here and then you know how much how many time it took to reach here okay and then you you can compare both okay this is done by the stream flow routing package cool then what else do we have in mod flow we have flow boundary conditions solver subsidence this is the solvers let's say let's go to the solvers here on my model we have I have used NWT but on your case you can use PCG or SIP for me on my experience PCG or SIP if you are working with Modflow 2005 are the most powerful solvers you can use another solver so you I mean since here I'm I'm dealing with Andean basins with high difference in elevation, I do use Newton solver. Okay. Subsidence, you can on model you can you can calculate how much how much will subside the surface elevation if you pump. So if you pump, you take water out of the system, but on the on the time scale, I mean, with time, you the elevation of the surface will decrease. So you can calculate it with um, with these two two package. Then in mode in mode flow, you can compare in between base, in between observed and calculated heads on piezometers, but as well you can calculate in between base flow. And for me, base flow is more relevant than piezometers because piezometers is the piezometric level on a point, and base flow is actually the representation on the of the discharge of the groundwater discharge on a regional scale. If it's, if you have understood this, please type yes seven. output well I have never used high mod and then surface row routing never post processor you can in post processor you have mod pad that is actually particle tracking and then you have some budget that is the model for uh, different zones on your model and then you have the empty 3 dms that is the package for MT3 DMS is the package for multi transport for contaminant transport, solute transport, mass transport on groundwater. Okay, cool. And here maybe we can do a webinar on MT3 DMS. It's not so complicated. It's just a, it's just a thing on on setting up the the numerical model and then the mass the mass transport the mass transport model. Okay. Cool. So we have done with mod flow packaging problems. There are many options here, and I hope that this webinar will have you uh, will give you a better knowledge of the packaging programs. Then we go to layer groups. Everybody go to model layer groups, and I will use our model. We go on model layer groups. By default. All the aquifers are confined. Okay, if you see, all aquifers are confined. You have three options. You have confined, you have non-simulated and convertible. If you, if you apply convertible, it will be confined or unconfined. Okay, if it's convertible, it will be confined or unconfined. If it's non-simulated, it will mean that water can do not go cannot go through or that water that, that go through the aquifer the water that go through the aquifer i mean on the horizontal layer is negligible because the because the hydraulic conductivity is so low that water can only go 
perpendicular to the aquifer. Okay? This is this means non-simulated. Non-simulated means that water that the hydraulic conductivity is so low that water that goes that goes to the aquifer is negligible and water can only go perpendicular to the aquifer. If you understood this, please type yes eight. Cool. On model, you can go as well to time. On time, you can define if you are working with steady state or transient. Where do you use steady state and where do you use transient? If you want to represent the, the average situation of your groundwater flow regime, you use steady state. But if your boundary condition or your requirement to the aquifer change with time, you use transient. In order to change from a steady state to transient, you just change it to transient here. Okay? Cool. The in mod flow here you can apply the the unit for time, the time unit. For the, by default, for, for me, I use seconds, and for length, I use meters, yeah? It's my recommendation, because you are on international, how to say, international system, international standard system, but uh, what is my recommendation is that, okay, you can use any unit, but you have to translate all your parameter data to that unit, okay? If you are working with data, all your hydraulic conductivity has to be in days. If you are working with feet, all your hydraulic conductivities, all your hydraulic parameters has to be in feet. Yeah, you have to be consistent with that. Otherwise, you will have a mix, a soup of units, and you you won't you won't be able to to deal with with that. You you have to say, okay, I'm going to use this unit and then all my data has to be translated to that unit in order to be inserted to the model because model muse do not make i mean it makes some conversions but actually it not make it by your own by its own i mean you cannot say i'm going to apply this in days no you change the unit and you put it in the default time unit okay if you have understood this please type yes nine Okay, cool. If you have any question, just yes, say it. Okay. So we are going to close this and then we go to mod flow program locations. Go to mod flow program locations. Okay, do you have it? Yeah. And these problem locations is actually where you have the different package of mod flow installed. For example, and I think the tutorial give you the instructions to install mod flow and mod flow in the VLT, and then you will and I have something some other package installed as well. Here you can see if actually you have mod flow installed to run with model muse. If it's if it appears in red, it actually won't run because you don't have it installed. If you don't have it, if you haven't downloaded, you can go to this website and download it, and then you 
uh, unpack and zip and then you place in my recommendation is to use this 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 route because i have it like this for example on my computer i have the, my pc c i have very deep app and then i have the different package of mod flow for example mod flow 2005 bin and then i have the executor here okay cool what else do i need to to show you is no nothing else for the moment okay so here you can save your project if you want okay and right now i'm going to i'm going to stop the webcast uh, for example and for the people that are seeing this video please subscribe to this youtube video okay and show us your support by sharing